are listening to the Pinax Report. Pinax Report. Pinax Report. The Pinax Report. Pinax Report. Pinax Report. Report. Live only on Pinax TV. In the day, the reports be a brand right here on this particular platform. Said the former first lady, Madame Teresa Kufo, she has passed on. Now her age, we are getting is uh, eighty-seven years. Now many can say there's a new information uh, and also a rehearsal my back and this time around, no. Uh, just when we talk, say we've lost one of Ghana's biggest icons in terms of politicians and first lady, you know. Now for so I didn't want back and one. See, see any part, no so information about it. Bit more confirming say we who. On kind who be a MP and a former MP for Ningo Pram Pram, whose name is a Enokte Mensa. Now, Enokte Mensa, dear, the friend usually is known in politics, no, a ET Mensa, our Ghanaian politician. Now, even he was a minister of education uh, in the Mahama regime, and also he was a, a member of parliament uh, for Ningo Pram Pram from 1997 till 2017. Uh, a kujan ejifi ni se mana so nangasa ka se onko biu na news news it came as a shock because we never thought that this thing could happen even though we are learning say uh, based on time here they were a year uh et men's which is 17th may 1946 and approximately you know and next first october and that first october we you know the age you know every 77 years and we never thought say he will leave us this soon because he was a very energetic man now i will share Pictures near the idea to go, excuse me, so uh, obi at this man was and uh, home final crank, but then so now, uh, in penny four canon, uh, obi abe obi a was as we should be a new crown, but first, so I call a more qua or more anchor. So that is a sad news now. Back on some crackers in a quack or shape, what really uh, caused this man's untimely demise and as a uh, new world on the course, you know, uh, information about him. Kakran is he was born on 17th May 1946. Also, of a year pram pram at a greater Accra region. Uh, now a brave war, no, no, a good school. It was snaps college uh, of accountancy, a whole and a complete a complete school in 1968. It's you know, uh, and a quiet RSA. Uh, three in 1970, a a fellow institute of financial accountant. Uh, in 1986, it's now your account officer. Uh, and also, he has also worked in the University of Ghana, Legon, as an accounting officer until he passed on a year in the day, first October 2023. Now, uh, uh, ET he has held on various positions. Some can catch on to be in the course of death. Maybe we will be a whole class. Information about can and a person will work on and also a assembly. Best and can once him. So you just have to stick and stay now. The political career, no, he was. Uh, during the PNDC military regime, no, uh, he was a long time executive chairman of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, the AMA, uh, and also an, uh, and as the mayor of Accra City, HNO, and joining NDC in 1992. In 1992, no, a one of our lesser person called a member of parliament for the group from the 1996 elections, no, Enya as a guitarist and that he needed some new went on to hold a very prolific and as a very um uh solidified figure and as a OG positions a hold draw the national national democratic congress na enya adequator now you and if you are he also became a minister of states of the fourth republic uh both under a year uh jerry john rollins a bright appointing as a youth and sports minister uh in a year jerry john rollins uh, era uh, that's from 1996 uh, air by each you know and uh rollins government you no know, if you are tamo so the you know uh, air banner in 2010 you know, and also osanji a uh, position as a minister of employment and social welfare and uh your yeah, papa uh your yeah, friend is saying uh john Dramani mahama so by yeah uh, obenya the minister of sports into which we are uh it means uh, he served ghana extensively uh, yeah patch said uh, he's married man with seven children uh, uh at the end of the day you know uh he sees that uh, he has really served ghana at a point in time he was even uh, awarded the companion he was even uh awarded the companion of the order of voter by the president's uh, Kufo's government, I was sure we are born in home more than year. But now, that story, your information, your tennis, and that, yeah, Madam Teresa, of course, said, "Okwa kwa dano na or the ET men as to eh the akana wa omunyano or makop." So as you said, no, there's more to this particular thing. 
And the big question a lot of people are asking is that what really caused the death of this particular man? We are learning that this man he didn't even die in Ghana, he died in South Africa. Now, Omo party said for some time now, not ETMS and whole and final. So he's been back and forth uh, from Ghana and abroad, but be a final destination of Koya and of Phil Sobiti me across San Hoy area in South Africa. But yesterday he gave up the ghost that uh, Yare no ah a docro no call South Africa so or Kosan Hoy area no Koya no or more try be a better God has said say it is it's time for E.T. Mensa to go home. May he rest in peace and uh, we'll be playing an excerpt of the former interview. Uh, or, 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 or yeah, yeah, it's a very sad thing, but then we believe, sir. Yanko Pong, uh, Edin Ekra, ABC. There was a factory over there, and some of the elders who had money connected, brought a few poles and connected the electricity to their homes. You couldn't count 10 houses in Papam with electricity. And then you go to Old Mingo, you have uh, WG Nate and Co. But few poles. You couldn't count ten. That was all. And then I started touring. First, I said, let me tour the constituency. Because if you're sitting out there, you think you go pram pram is pram 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 new you go old I saw the lending brother. I told the lending brother of this place. And rural electrification was the order of the day. And so you fed into it. It wasn't exclusive to you. It was a national policy by the government then. You are, you are, you are a funny character. When there is water to be fetched, if you don't go there, it's there to be fetched. You don't go and fetch your portion. Will you have it? Even when manna was falling, people had to wake up early in the morning to go and collect their portion. But someone listen to me. Someone sent you the manner. And you listen to me. It. Somebody said something anyway. If you want to be I would be as well. I don't like people. Let's go. Look, look. If you want to talk to me, you want to. I don't want to talk to you. You want to talk to me. Listen to me. Listen. I'm not being mischievous, honorable. You are we're being. Having, you, we're having an interview. You are being mischievous. We are having an interview. You are talking to someone who is more experienced than you, man. Yes, but I'm asking you the questions. And then your questions must be. You want to take us. In the question that you ask, I am being as a gentleman as I can, and I'm asking you the question. And I'm telling you, possible. I'm telling you as a gentleman that you are not being decorous. Please answer the questions. You are not being decorous. Accept it. Then we go ahead. Please answer. You didn't allow me to answer the question. You were just interjecting and I being mischievous. I needed to clarify the issues. What issues are you clarifying? That you know somebody. There was somebody here before I came. Did not somebody also wait for the mana to fall into his mouth? Hmm? So, so, you have, so you have with electrification let's say in Ningo Pram Pram. Hmm? So you help with the electrification project in Ningo Pram Pram. I what championed about? the electrification in Ningo Pram Pram. When you know, the real electrification, we went around the place and we realized that if we were going to go Along the line of share, self help, many villages with a level of poverty in the villages, many villages would not be connected to the national grid. So I went, spoke to the uh, local government minister then and the authorities, and I thought that if we want to make an impact in our quest for electrification we will have to get part of the common fund to help buy the low tension poles for the people and then roll it out. And the people in the village, if you don't go to them, you don't even know what they have and what they needed. So I championed it up to today. As I speak to you today, we are left with only 15 out of the 187 to be connected to the grid. And you can go and check from the ministry the efforts that one has to make, even the four that were to, the 15 and the four, I had to go out there, pick the engineers, take them around to do the wrecking. And I do this 
happily. In these remaining 15 constituencies, do you have a timeline by which you would be perhaps getting electricity to them as well? It is work in progress. When about six weeks ago, the people have been worried, so I took some of them to know what it is. We went to the ministry, then we went to the various towns, did a survey, and uh, we, we have done all the calculations, with, and the minister has given approval. Now they're waiting for resources to roll out five out of the 15. Mm -hmm. So, education. Okay. Let's go on to education. Almost other schools, especially in Lenigoy. You go to schools and the children, when your, your child is being enrolled, they are the ones who are witnesses. So what I'm talking about, when your child is being enrolled, you will have to think about providing tests, suits, tests for them. And we've done the seven study, you have it. The long list of what we've done. Now, the number of schools which have been built in this place, not from my pocket, but through my, you know, lobby and making sure that education is respected and patronized in this place. Education is one area that one can beat one chest that will come a long way. So when you say you've come a long way in education in this district now, because it's also a constraint in a district, do you have, say, a number of schools that you can mention that under the lobbying, I mean, the strategy and lobbying of the Honorable E.T. Mensa, you've got a school, say, at Aklabanya or a school at, say, Afienya. Could you mention some there, of the schools? There, there is nothing at Aklabanya. What, you know what I did? The little common fund and a source support from outside. Outside? Friends, yes. Yeah. Friends that I knew when I was a sports minister. You go, I went to the States, once upon a time with him in New York, and we met the National Football Association guys that I knew. They wanted to know what assistance, as as as, uh, as member of parliament, what assistance do I need? I said, I need a computer, because ICT is examinable subject now in Ghana, but in the schools in my you know, area, the Dalu computers. And we see 160, the first member of parliament in this country who donated, who donated computers, was added to schools. But and wait, wait, still on computers. The last, you know, um, Wasi examination before then. I donated, I helped, you know, the Ning Ningo Senate School. I gave them some of the computers and I donated 980 laptops, also sourced from friends to them. Then Ningo Pram uh, the Pram Pram Senior High, 340 to them. And mind you, Pram Pram Senior High is my daddy. Was under your there was tenor. there was no not under my tenor. I gave birth to it. How so? How because there was there was no senior high. I had to lobby, follow, harass. You you can find check out from uh Shogana, who was a minister of education. Me before them I saw it. There were things that had to be done, the basic things that should be done, that we needed something to be started and all. And one of my cousins, who is an educationist, and, a, and then another cousin of mine, the Macron, I encouraged them and they started something in some makeshift structures around here. And then as a result of that, we followed up. I got them, to, uh, the education people, to absorb it and they absorbed it. And now we have built first class structures okay. for the city of Mali. And then, uh, when you go to the South, you saw what it was, what it is today when I came around. You saw a it was to, lift. It was a fist lift. Pardon? Tables and chairs produced and have all these pictures that I can show to you. Okay.
so, so that's education. How about infrastructure? Say roads. Mm -hmm. What are your achievements in the road sectors in your constituency? Uh, you ask me the achievements of my party. Well, since you, do, you are the chief lobbyist, yeah. it's only fair my to party. now give it to you personally more than give it to the party. Yeah. Because initially when I talked about the rural electrification, which was a party and government project, you... No, I'm you saying that somebody will have to... Uh, so that's what I'm asking yeah. you, this somebody. And I'm, I'm answering the way I want to answer. You cannot decide how to answer a question. I can frame the question for you. But you, you cannot, you can frame, you, you cannot, you know, exactly. <laughs> show me how to answer it. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, so come again. Yes, so road infrastructure. So we traveled between Pram Pram and Ningo. Yes. You mentioned that the bridge that was constructed on the Jangi River mm. or the Jangi Lagoon, Lagoon. Mm. the Jangi Lagoon was conceived in the early nineties when Chairman Rollins, PNDC chairman at the time, came visiting. It looked very beautiful seeing the bridge. But after crossing the bridge the road doesn't look good. There are potholes. Yeah, I'm sure you are, you are Ghanaian or even I'm sure you travel far and wide. Road construction is no child's play. The, um, the road that you see, you drove from Accra, turned into Plum Plum. That's at the 3rd December. 5 January 1982. All those roads were planned. There was no road in this country which was gone. And I can testify. Later we'll talk about the crowd. And when it turned into plan plan those days, if you were with your wife who was pregnant, by the time you get in here, there might be a disaster. And you cannot wear white clothes across the road was really bad. Today this is what is there. And then it goes all the way through to Ningo. If you, I'm sure you pass by Ningo Oasis. When you get to Oasis, it becomes the footpath. So vehicles were not plying on it. Mm. Something has been done. The Ningo Township, the old Ningo Township itself, what you see there wasn't what it was. It was fixed. And then again, you know, it fell apart. And by the time we lost the election in 2000, contracts had been awarded for the continuation of the road from Jamie Bridge all the way to Wukumabe. But when MPP came, they signed the contract that, that was uh, an NDC person, ZCC was a MPP 